Redditors what is the most extreme Darwin award act you have witnessed? What was the aftermath? Had a client told over and over again that he cannot smoke while using oxygen. Told his doctor. Told all of his case workers. Told all of his family. You will literally burn and die if you keep lighting cigarettes while your cannula is in, you dumb ass. Sure enough. He ends up admitted to the air with severe facial burns and plastic tubing melted deep into what little remained of his skin. He lingered in the IQ for a couple of days and died. Set his own dang face on fire after a dozen warnings. He didn't even have to quit smoking. All he had to do was take the tubing off before he lit up. Darwin Award. Didn't see the act itself, but saw the aftermath. Had to go clean up a body fluid in the air of the hospital I worked at. Guy had climbed over a reservoir wire topped fence to get into some restricted area. I think a water district pump house. On the way in he slipped, and the razor wire sliced his scrotum open. The fluid I was cleaning up was a mix of blood, urine and what I can only assume was leakage from his colon. But keep in mind, the Darwin Award is for people who remove themselves from the gene pool, through one method or another. So the pee is stored in the balls. My father worked at an automotive parts plant. A steel bumper got caught in the press and a guy removed the safety guards and crawled in. A second guy saw this and went after him to pull him out. The press fell and they both got crushed beyond recognition. Never bypass any safety guard. This makes me so sad. Especially that second guy. Dude tried crossing a rail while a cargo train was going towards him at around 60 miles per hour while freaking around with his phone. He became a 100 yard long spread of blood guts brain and another 1000 pieces. Cleaning crew spent 6 hours picking him up. Poor cleaning crew. Developing country plants. People will crawl into large pipes tanks and take naps and end up getting trapped. Not uncommon to find a dead human clogging up your pipes a few months later. Ah yes the eugenics of carnivorous plants is risky business. My dad is a safety specialist at a printing company. He had a few good stories, but this one really takes the cake. So, one day at work some dude notices a rattlesnake on company grounds. Some people are called, and a small crowd of other employees gathers to take a look at it from a safe distance. Everything is under control. Then one of the employees gets a great idea. He rushes at the snake and attempts to grab it with his bare hands. This went about as well as you would expect. Here I was expecting a mishap with a printing press. This dumbass friend of my Bill thought he was Superman and could leap over a raging bonfire despite nearly 20 people telling him it's a bad idea. Idiot backed up 3 steps and then tried to jump up and over the 6 foot raging fire. Of course, what we all knew would happen did happen. And Super Moran landed right in the middle of the fire, knocking it down and spreading hot ashes and burning embers everywhere. He got burned so badly in multiple places that we now refer to him as third degree. Falling into a bonfire is a one step program. Chris Titus on how he stopped drinking. Not exactly witness, but expected outcome, was studying in dorm room in college. Guy I'm friendly with comes in and asks if I want to snort some viverin. Correct answer of no given. He proceeds to chop and snort it in front of me. Does not look fun. Then he asks if I want to go swimming in an irrigation ditch, as it is super hot. I am at a rural college in central CA and we are surrounded by orchards. They use irrigation ditches to get water out of the orchards. These can be quite deep, but the thing is they also go under roads and bridges. They tend to have filtration screens so debris does not get under road bridge. If you get stuck up against the filter, El Mort. So I of course explain this to my vivorant snorting friend. He claims to be a sailor and will not have a problem. A few hours later I hear about expected outcome. Working for a power utility back in the mid 90s we had this one guy who would steal power every chance he got. Got bad enough that we disconnected the line coming from the transformer to the house. We would have removed the transformer but it fed two other homes. Well, one night we have a thunderstorm come through and knock out power in his neighborhood. Guess who thinks this is a great time to climb his butt up the pole and hook some wires back up. Had to go out at 11.30 on a Friday night and help the coroner pull his charred butt off the pole and replace the blown transformer. Bet that wasn't in the job description. 
few weeks ago a guy from out the road was overtaking a truck on the M18 and tried to make the exit, it's not a full high speed exit, it's 90 degrees and you really have to slow down for this one, but for whatever reason he was still in the passing lane, so he pulled front of the truck, hit the brakes, and didn't make it, trucks can't stop on a dime, it plowed into his van flipping it and sending him and his van about 20 meters up the embankment. It took the services a few hours to pick all the pieces of him off the road. One of my first apartments I ever had was a proper slum. The landlord was a born into money spoiled butthole who was so cheap I'd bet he'd straight invent nails to save a penny. I had a myriad of issues with the apartment which he would always half butt fix. There are many stories, but the closest to a Darwin award I ever saw him get was this. The place was an icebox the first, and only, winter I lived there. When I finally complained he brought some pose old as heck space heater. This thing lasted about 2 weeks at most and then died. His next solution was, him, just turn on the oven and leave it open. Me, are you serious? I know I don't pay electric, but that's not a good idea for a lot of reasons. Him, I know, but it'll be short term, so just do it for now. So I did. The short term solution lasted about 2 weeks before the stove blew out. Who would have guessed? I let him know and after about a week of a freezing apartment and microwave meals he comes to replace the oven. The one that was there plugged in. The new one needs to be wired directly. Should be simple. Replace the outlet. He proceeds to do this without turning off the power to the kitchen. About 3 minutes in he gets shocked so bad he has to sit down and recover. I almost called an ambulance, but a few minutes later he seemed fine and he was a prick anyway. So whatever. He eventually finished after taking my advice and turning off the power. Hold on to your asses because here comes the best part. His job? Elementary school shop teacher. Have done some tasks that required doing stuff like that with live wires. God dang I'm a nervous wreck after. I know I'm good exactly that kind of jobs but heck no I would do it voluntarily. It is an adrenaline rush for sure. First year of college spring break South Padre Island. Num nuts decides to dive from hotel balcony window to pool from xxxx floor. Doesn't make it, as the horizontal to clear was at least 15-16 feet. The sound of him bouncing into the water is haunting. Num nuts dies shortly after at hospital. Pool closed for like 2 days. Note, even though video games generally make water either an instant kill or no fall damage if you jump into it real water does not work like that. Friend was doing wheelies on his motorcycle without a helmet, only going around 30-40 miles per hour. He lost control and face planted on the concrete. His brain started to swell. His parents pull his life support 3 days later. Horribly depressing. Watched a lady slam into a pole and the pole snaps and falls across the hood. The transformer slams the ground and the wires are draped across the car. She jumps out and starts pulling wires off the truck while I'm running and yelling stop. Stop. Don't tow and she gets electrocuted and thrown on her butt. I've already called 911 by this point and told them the situation. She's completely unresponsive as I'm slapping her face and checking her pulse. I realize she has two kids in the truck and now I'm terrified they're going to be electrocuted so I yell at them to not move. My friend starts CPR. We're ex-lifeguards, on the lady and I get to the kids. Not knowing what wires do what, I got them to climb out the back window into the truck. At that moment, the mom suddenly wakes up and immediately attacks my friend. We're wrestling this deranged hair burnt alcohol smelling lady to the ground so she doesn't electrocute herself again when a police officer arrives. He and the EMTs took everything from there as we explained everything. Apparently the woman was drunk as heck at 3pm and drove her and her kids into a telephone pole after a fight with the dad, who had custody of them. Honestly I can't believe she was still alive. That shock should have toasted her. As a note, if any vehicle hits electricity apparatus all zet al, your best bet is to stay in it until someone from the utility comes along. If you have to get out of it, a two footed jump. Make sure you are not in contact with the vehicle and the ground at the same time. This happens more often than you would think with combines and farm equipment. That would be the guy in my town who tried to surf a tsunami a few years ago. It ended about how you'd expect. I didn't personally see it go down, but I went to the same school as him. Legend. I didn't witness it, 
but my brother's friend was just over for the fourth and apparently some guy tried to break into a lot to steal a chemical used in making drugs from a tanker truck. The next day, they found the truck depressurized, a styrofoam cup, a screwdriver, and a whole lot of red spread across the lot. Breaking bad gone truly bad. Watched a couple of guys in high school do drag racing, on a country road, in the snow, with a large ditch next to said road. Took 3 attempts before the snow on top was replaced with ice. Guys took off, hit the brakes, spun, nose into ditch, multiple flips and ground impacts before stopping upside down. Both were taken to hospital, one died 3 days later, the other was left with permanent brain damage and paralyzed from the waist down. At first I thought you meant drag racing like in the RuPaul sense and was like wait what? Brother-in-law's story, he was installing an automated warehouse system that used a robotic crane system to put pallet loads of stuff on tall racks. Warning signs all over the place, no humans allowed, etc. Second shift employee comes in all hungover and climbs up in the rack to take a nap. The robot comes by and stacks a 5 ton pallet of stuff on him. His death was instantaneous. Much additional safety warnings, monitored cameras, etc after that. Around here in May, usually around the 2nd of May for weekend, they have boating events on the local rivers. These usually involve lots of unsafe water crafts and drinking. So in general it's a Darwin award waiting to happen. This particular year we had quite a bit of snow melt and the rivers were running very fast and deep. I was surprised they decided to go through with the event as I was certain someone would die. Sure enough, a canoeist hit some submerged debris, fell in the water, no life jacket, was swept away by the current and died. I am always amazed that people treat water so cavalierly. On an African safari we drove by a hippo pond. Hippos, in case you don't know, are the biggest color of humans in Africa. So we're being cautious, respectful, all that jazz. We start driving off. As we go, a truck pulls up and this group of tourists comes charging out, whooping, hooting, and hollering. They're like OMG hippos. Selfie time they go wading in the water and are generally just being huge dongs. Last thing I saw before we drove away was one of the hippos breaking off from the main group heading ominously towards them. In the days following, I tried to find reports of hippo attacks on tourists, but couldn't find anything, so maybe nothing happened. Pro tip, though, guys if you ever see a hippo pond leave them the frick alone, they absolutely can kill you. And despite their looks, those suckers can run. This was a ways back, but some tree huggers were protesting a freight train that was passing through that was carrying a nuclear warhead to some place. So of course, some butthole decided he could stop the train by sitting on the tracks, just after a curve where the train couldn't possibly see him in time, thinking the train was going to stop like a truck if you were blocking a road. This dumb frick actually stayed on the track when he saw it wasn't going to stop, had more than plenty of time to move out of the way, and lost both legs, then was blaming them afterwards. That was a whole new level of dumb fuckery I never knew existed. Yet it's surprising how many people don't realize it takes like a mile for most trains to come to a complete stop. I used to work for a large beer manufacturer. We once got a fatality notice from a subsidiary in China. A forklift worker wasn't able to adjust his seat, so for whatever reason he decided to ask his buddy to come up behind him with another forklift and push his seat for him with his forks, while he was still sitting in it. Crushed his aspirations of comfort, as well as his chest. Why didn't he get off before trying that retarded idea? I've seen many accidents where people died because of their rash driving but one incident stands out and scares me even now. Two youngsters on a bike with no helmets were driving rashly at 90 kmph and they decided not to slow down on a curve. So the guy who was driving it tried to overtake some car from the left but hit the car's side mirror and fell down. Their heads hit the ground and they split open with all their brains being spilled out. It was a horrible sight. Didn't see it in person. But someone I went to school with tried to slide down a banister at a nightclub and fell 4 stories to his death. This happened at a bar in Grand Rapids, MI as well. I think they ended up closing it off somehow to make it Darwin proof. There's a trail I used to walk my dog at. Off the trail only about 10 feet is a small cliff. 
15 featuring high going up the hill and it is all loose rock, because it is so small, lots of people love to try and climb it, despite the sign saying not to climb the little cliff, saw two kids, maybe 12 13, climbing the little cliff, one grabs a rock and pulls it right off the cliff, he fell down a good 9 feet, and so did the rock, right onto his face, he was dead before his parents even knew what happened. Seriously, idk why so many people try to climb without equipment, there's a reason why diehard climbers use it, so they don't become a slide in a safety powerpoint. Jumps off cliff with hang glider assuring me that he can easily make the postage stamp field, somewhat upwind, goes into trees a while later, disemboweled on impact, dies in the trees. One that comes to mind in my own life. My buddy and I were walking along these train tracks, all is well, no trains, just having a stroll, so we come to this bridge and we laugh, remember that scene in Stand By Me where they have to run from the train haha, <laughs> that would never happen, so instead of heeding common sense we begin to cross the bridge, it's not massive, perhaps 500 meters or so, and we're about halfway when, well you all know where this was going, a train is coming behind us. Now I looked and noticed that the train was on the opposite set of tracks. So I was convinced that, while we were in pretty serious danger, if we didn't make it we probably won't die as long as we didn't get sucked under somehow. Alas we still ran like heck and my buddy was ahead of me screaming laughing run dude run. So we booked it as fast as we could. Now remember, we could've actually ran towards the train and got off the bridge much easier lol but instinct I suppose said run from the oncoming train. So we ran and ran without looking back. He made it off about 2-3 seconds before me and then I made it just in time for the train to whiz past. As I suspected it was on the other track so we were relatively safe unless the wind force had sucked us in. However as I stood there, quite close to the track still, within literally 2 seconds of the train coming another train wished past on the tracks we were on. So had we not started running right when we did, or if we fell, one or both of us would have died. And then you took a short cut through the swamp and got leeches on your junk. Me and my buddy, we decided to go rock climbing. Only problem was we didn't bring our gear because we have no gear because we are not rock climbers. So we get about halfway up this 40 foot face and realize we just crossed the line between bravery and stupidity. Can't climb up any higher can climb back down. Luckily there were people there that were rock climbers who came to rescue us. They said we were idiots to which we immediately agreed. We had a guy who thought sleeping in the baler while hiding himself with cardboard somehow made him a genius. One long night we thought he was in the restroom and threw our cardboard into the baler and turned it on. We almost crushed the dumbass if it weren't for me who suggested we empty the baler before we jam it and stopped it. We nearly crap ourselves when he jumped out the freaking thing and ran away to clock out and leave. We never saw him again so I assume he quit or someone reported it and he was fired. Also you can't hear crap when that thing is on. That thing is about as loud as a train horn and it doesn't stop until the thing is compressed and decompressed. Screaming wouldn't have helped him as the sound of the baler would have drowned him out. I'm just glad I didn't have to witness a human body being crushed and possibly explode while working a soul crushing job. I'm already hating my life I don't need to see that kind of crap in my life too. Never use the baler. Michael. This group of guys I knew growing up used to go to where the highway ends and roll under semi trucks as they got off. You can probably guess how the game ended. Not witnessed myself but just yesterday police discovered the bodies of three travel vloggers who had gone over the edge of a waterfall after swimming in the pools atop them. Wasn't there but a dude I used to drink with stopped showing at the pub and when I finally met up with him he told me he was riding his bike home at night rounded a corner and hit a cow. Shattered his wrists and lost both his testicles and most of his penis to the fairing of the bike going over it. He didn't die, but he did get kicked out of the gene pool. Award granted. We had a guy working in our data center who was kind of odd, but he was alright. One of his known tendencies was to be rather punctual. So one day, when he didn't show up to work, it caused immediate concern. After a few hours, the owner told some of the managers to go to his house and check up on him. The head of customer service and the head of sales went to his house, only about 10 miles away, and knocked on his door. After no answer, they looked in the windows and saw the guy asleep on his couch. 
they banged on the windows to get his attention, and when he didn't move, they called 911. The fire department detected heavy levels of carbon monoxide, and had to clear the area. Eventually, the EMTs were allowed to remove the guy, and thankfully, he was somehow still alive, but he was hospitalized for a while. The source was traced to a large diesel generator he had running in his basement, and had he not been on the upper floors when he passed out, he might have been long dead. When he returned, he was never quite the same. He always had headaches, was spacey, and his mood and behavior changed. He explained to us that he was having a dispute with the power company but did not specify what this dispute was, or how long he was without electricity. Eventually, his job performance suffered too much, and he was let go. Poor guy. In high school, one of my good friends and three other people, all 18 or younger, were in his car driving on some winding country roads. They were doing fast and furious crap like drifting and driving way above the speed limit. Driver loses control of the car and they slam into a tree, killing two of the passengers instantly while my friend died on the way to the hospital. The driver was the only survivor and he's now spending the rest of his life behind bars. I didn't see the accident, but I visited my friend's mother the next day when I heard rumors swirling around. She told me what happened, and we cried together, but the whole time, I kept thinking to myself why the frick would anyone do something like this? For some reason the driver often survives. In cases like this they actually deserve to live with that guilt I think. When I was in high school we had two lethal accidents involving students and both times the driver survived. My dad's work consisted in him visiting workplaces, ranging from offices to construction sites, and checking if all laws and regulations were respected. He told me two stories that I remember. One day a young new janitor apprentice had to clean the workplace using a Karcher power washer and of course it didn't work, so he checked and looked in the hose. Pulled the trigger and TADAA lost one eye. The corporation got a sanction for not giving the apprentice the lessons tied to the equipment he had to use. Another time it was on a construction site in winter. It is really important to follow the rules because of the way the ground behaves in cold temperatures. They had to build a cement fence and the common way to do it is to put one pole then one panel then another pole then the two other panels. But the construction worker didn't see it this way. He wanted to get it done fast so he put one pole and all the panels and what happened will shock you. The panels fell on him. He had nowhere to go because there was a slope behind him and he lost one leg. This time the company wasn't considered at fault. I witnessed the aftermath of a kitchen accident that will forever haunt me. An employee at a pizza restaurant was cleaning the pizza skin roller. Basically a machine with large solid metal drums inside a contained unit that when you drop the dough into the machine it flattens it out to make a pizza. He decided it would be smart to open the door covering the heavy metal rollers and bypass the safety switch so the rollers could be turned on without protective door. He did this so he could apply pressure from a scraper to the rollers to clean the rollers, which was much faster than manually advancing the rollers a notch at a time. The result? His had slipped while the metal rollers were spinning. It pulled off two fingers completely and crushed them beyond recovery, pulled one finger off at the second joint, and crushed the end of the fourth one. His thumb was unaffected. In addition to the damage to his fingers his hand was completely degloved. All the skin from the wrist of his hand pulled completely off. He had been warned twice before about doing this and told if he did it again, he would be terminated. This was his third infraction. Darwin Award. He didn't die, but the rest of his life was definitely impacted. There is no description of an injury that makes me cringe as effectively as degloved. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.